So, <clears throat> maxillary expansion treatment was originally developed as strictly an orthodontic procedure. If your maxilla is too narrow to house all of your teeth, then instead of having to go and pull some teeth, you can expand the maxilla to make more room. But over the years, people started to report some breathing benefits and it was looked more into. And nowadays, it's gaining a lot of traction as a treatment for obstructive sleep apnea. There's a lot of different treatments for maxillary expansion, and I've put them into four categories. The first is instant maxillary expansion, a surgery where you go under and you wake up with an expanded maxilla. This is called a segmental Lefort osteotomy, and they cut the maxilla in multiple places, pull it apart, screw everything back together, and you wake up and you have an expanded maxilla. The next category uses expanders, which is an appliance fit into your mouth. Specifically, this category is bone-born expanders, meaning that something about the expander itself is drilled into your skull so that the expander anchors into the bone and is able to push the bone outward and expand your maxilla. Examples include the MSE or MARPI, standing for Maxillary Skeletal Expander or Mini Screw Assisted Rapid Palatal Expander, which is what I have in my mouth now, which gave me this pretty wicked gap tooth, also called a diastema. And there are other types of bone-borne expanders, one of the more popular ones being the TPD, the transpalatal distractor. Similarly, and I'm gonna put it in the same category here, but when these bone-borne expanders fail, there's an additional procedure that you can conduct called SARPI, which is surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion. This is when they go in and they cut part of the skull to alleviate some of the resistance of maxillary expansion. That way the expanders are pushing against less resistance and have a higher success rate. The next category also uses expanders. However, they're not screwed into any bone. So we call them tooth borne expanders because they're anchored around the teeth. Sometimes they're removable, sometimes they're not, but there's no type of surgery or drilling into any sort of bone. Tooth borne expanders are under a lot of scrutiny for being inappropriately used on adults, but that's a discussion for another day. A similarly controversial, or if not more controversial, method of maxillary expansion is the last category, which is the natural maxillary expansion. This is when you use a series of exercises and tongue postures, you train the tongue you might chew some gum and do some swallowing exercises and over time the claim is that you can achieve some maxillary expansion and other changes in your skull. So these often go by the name of orthotropics or mewing. But this video isn't to talk about which treatments are better or worse. So to help explain how maxillary expansion helps obstructive sleep apnea, I have a new friend. And I hope to use this new friend in many videos to come. So why don't you viewers drop a comment of what you think this fella's name should be and that top voted appropriate YouTube comment will forever be this friend's name. The first question is, well, what is the maxilla? The maxilla is a part of the skull colored here in two halves, red and pink, that houses the teeth, the upper teeth, as well as makes up part of the nasal cavity. And this opening here, which is behind your nose, is the nasal cavity. It's where air flows through when you breathe through your nose. Specifically, air flows up into your nostrils and immediately back into the nasal cavity. And it exits out of this opening here. So now for the question of how does maxillary expansion help with obstructive sleep apnea? Well, first you got to know one thing. So the roof of your mouth here called the palate is the same bone as the floor of your nasal cavity. So the bottom of your nasal cavity and the roof of your mouth here is the same bone. If you were to drill through one, it'll poke out the other. And so the idea is, is that with maxillary expansion treatment, 
when you pull the maxilla apart like this, you also widen the nasal cavity here. And you also get that iconic gap tooth, well, depending on what kind of treatment you're doing. And when you expand the nasal cavity and when you widen the nasal cavity, you help alleviate nasal congestion. You'll often have turbinates, which are the sinus tissues in your nostrils that can swell up and take up a lot of space and give you the feeling that you can't breathe. Well, if you do maxillary expansion and your nasal cavity widens, then there's more room for the turbinates and overall better nasal breathing and better nasal airflow. There are also soft tissue components in the nose, such as the nasal valve that also gets pulled apart as the maxilla and nasal cavity gets pulled apart. So some of the benefits come from the bone being expanded and then that also helps pull the nose apart as well. And since nasal congestion is a form of obstruction, you can imagine how simply having better nasal breathing immediately helps with obstructive sleep apnea. And that's not to mention the great benefits that nasal breathing even while you're awake has. Nasal breathing as opposed to mouth breathing is a much more healthy and serene way to live, but that's a topic for another day as well. So the next way that maxillary expansion helps with obstructive sleep apnea is related to the first way, and it's called the reduction in negative pressure or also called the Venturi effect. And the Venturi effect describes this phenomenon where if fluid is passing through a pipe and the example here is that fluid being the air you breathe is passing through your nasal cavity. The phenomenon is that if you have a choke in that pipe, a few things happen. The first thing that happened is that the fluid that passes out of the pipe has a much higher velocity. And so an analogy of this is if you have a garden hose and you put your thumb on the hose, then the water starts spraying a lot faster and farther. But another thing happens. The Venturi effect states that in the section with the choke, there's also a reduction of pressure inside section of the choke, which is what's left behind by the increased velocity of the exiting fluid. And so this low pressure in the choke gives you a pressure differential. Outside of the choke, you have normal pressure. Outside of the pipe, you have normal pressure. And inside of the choke, you have a reduced pressure, which gives you a pressure differential. There's now less pressure inside than outside. And that creates a force on the pipe in the section with the choke, which encourages that pipe to collapse. Now, if you have a very rigid pipe, maybe made of metal, it might be very unlikely that a pressure differential is gonna cause the pipe to collapse. But your airways are very soft and they collapse very easily. So when you have a choke, not only do you already have a harder time breathing, but now you have this force pulling your airways to become even smaller. And I'll give you an example right here. So let me take off my nasal strip to show you. If I breathe in really hard, you'll see that my nose collapses. <laughs> This is called nasal valve collapse. And the less of a choke there is in your nose, the less nasal valve collapse you can get. And there's, of course, other areas for collapse along your upper airway. Now, the next way that maxillary expansion treatment helps with obstructive sleep apnea is this. When you breathe through your nose, your brain properly sends signals to these muscles in your upper airway called upper airway dilator muscles. And what these muscles do is exactly what it says. It dilates or expands or holds open the upper airway, whoops. So when you breathe through your mouth, the muscles in your upper airway don't get the proper signal from your brain to stay open. And even if you breathe through your nose throughout the night, but you breathe through your mouth throughout the day because you are a chronic mouth breather due to chronic nasal congestion, you still spend a lot of the day with your brain not properly sending the signals to the upper airway dilator muscles. So the tone of the muscles is gonna be reduced and they're gonna, they're gonna become more floppy. It's the same use it or lose it idea that applies to many other parts of your body as well.
So max layer expansion helps you achieve an all day and night state of natural healthy nasal breathing which helps the tonality of your upper airway dilator muscles which keeps them from collapsing because otherwise they'd be very floppy and weak. The next way is one that's a, a little bit controversial. It's that when you expand the maxilla, especially if you expand the back of the maxilla, you add tensioning to the tissues and muscles in the upper airway. They get pushed apart a little bit, which gives them a proper tension, which helps them not collapse the same way the floppy upper airway dilator muscles collapse. Now, this is something I've heard, and I asked my surgeon, Dr. Stanley Liu from Stanford, who's very hot in this field, and he says that it's an insignificant factor, and the way that the muscles and tissues are oriented in your upper airway are such that they can only really be properly tensioned with advancement, not expansion, where advancement is pulling the jaws forward and expansion is what we're talking about. We're pulling them apart. So the next way that helps is maxillary expansion increases the size of your maxilla, making more space for the tongue, specifically allows many patients to achieve what's called proper resting tongue posture. And what proper resting tongue posture is, is just when you have the tongue on the roof of your mouth, from the front all the way to the back. And when you have your tongue in the proper resting tongue posture, everything's good. But if you have low resting tongue posture, because your maxilla is too narrow and it just doesn't fit up there, then your tongue folds back into your throat, narrowing your airway. And that kind of leads me to the next cause, which is helping alleviate mouth breathing at night, which not only helps because of the upper airway dilator muscles signal, but also helps because if you're breathing through your mouth, you cannot have proper resting tongue posture because proper resting tongue posture seals off your airway to your mouth. So if you are having proper resting tongue posture, you can't breathe. You just can't do it. And so if you're breathing through your mouth throughout the night, your tongue is falling back. And even if it's not totally falling back, it's still folding back into your throat. And not only that, but when you're breathing through your mouth, you have to open your mouth and this causes, this means you need to rotate your mandible downward and backward, applying another pressure into your upper airway, which makes it narrower and more susceptible to collapse. So the last way that maxillary expansion helps with obstructive sleep apnea is a very interesting one. So first you got to know that there's a bone right around here called the pterygoid bone. And unfortunately, it doesn't have its own color in our friend here. So I'll put some pictures up so you can get a better understanding of where it is and what it looks like. And the pterygoid bone is connected to the maxilla through a suture called the pterygopalatine suture. And for those who don't know what a suture is, basically different sections of the skull come together and form these little ridges which are called sutures. And it's where a new bone is deposited along as humans grow from babies into adults. And some maxillary expansion treatments have so much force of expansion that they'll break apart the pterygopalatine suture. And some surgeries, such as the ease surgery, which is a form of SARPI, well, actually, the surgeon will go ahead and intentionally cut the pterygopalatine suture, and this cut results in what's called the pterygomaxillary disjunction, or PMD. And the PMD helps alleviate some of the resistance of expansion, but it does another interesting thing, too. So oftentimes, the pterygoid bone will be pulling or holding back the maxilla. And when you achieve PMD, it'll alleviate some of that pull and the maxilla might actually advance. And in some patients, it goes a step further where if their mandible is really being held back by their maxilla, 
then the mandible might also come forward as well. And having your maxilla and mandible come forward is another great way to alleviate obstructive sleep apnea in many patients by opening up the airway behind the jaws, called the posterior airway. So that's all the ways that maxillary expansion helps with obstructive sleep apnea. It's a pretty awesome treatment, and don't forget to give this guy a name. Thanks for watching.